Hello. That should be better. I guess I'll start over. Uh, my mic was muting. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to Hunt Lab tonight. We're doing some research for the custom ammo uh, deep dive that's coming up. I did a poll with my uh, YouTube community about whether or not I should stream some of my research. Because um, a lot of the heart of my channel is around um, you know the research and the data I put forward rather than my gameplay. Uh, and... Um, you know, we had 42% who said they didn't watch live stream, but other than that, it was pretty unanimous that you guys uh, wanted me to put some of this stuff up. So I don't have a strict plan on what's going on tonight. Um, there's a frowny face. My audio not still not coming through, or is it working now? Um, and so what we're going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be working on... Oh, I'm hard to, no, I'm not actually a cowboy. I do have this guy here to hang out with us. <laughs> um, no, I'm not a cowboy. Uh, I do have my avatar, uh, who's, who I still haven't named. So, like, my username's A is cool. It's been that forever. Um, I haven't decided if I want to give uh, my cowboy avatar <laughs> a name or not. Um, I might do the PNG tuber thing someday, but for now... Um, he's just going to be hanging out on the screen with me. Um, but what we're looking at here, here I'll get some of this out of the way, uh, is the beginnings of the spreadsheet for the uh, Velocity Deep Dive. Um, not sure how I want to arrange my data yet. Um, and so I'm going to uh, go into the shooting range right now and poke around with incendiary ammo a bit um, and see what data I can actually find on the dummies. Uh, and then try and figure out whether or not I need to work with an actual human to gather some of this data. Um, but uh, right now, I'm just charting the uh, different ammo types and what guns they appear on. Um, and, you know, every every ammo type, I could probably do my own deep dive on. So I, I got to... Be careful on how I choose uh, to present this because I want to give enough information that's going to be useful for you guys to play with, obviously. Um, but, you know, I, I could probably talk 10 minutes on the ins and outs of each of these if I go into the nitty gritty of each gun. Um, let's see. So uh, I'm just going to hump, uh, hop in and we're going to jump into the um, training area and see if we can find if it'll show us uh, what distances different ammos ignite at. Now, I've heard that there might be some differences between um, the different guns. For example, a two-slot medium rifle versus a three-slot medium rifle. Uh, and so I'm just going to poke through some of that for now. Um, and uh, that's the plan for tonight. Pretty laid back. Nothing too um, intense about that. How is everyone liking the Tide of Desolation patch so far? someone with so I want a two slot and a three slot incendiary is what we're looking for so we're going to need quartermaster which I find like a lot of the new hunters actually come with quartermaster um, which makes it really easy to run with lowdowns um, like with the um, the two slot guns like the upper mat or the uh, katana even um, I feel like it's really easy to get hunters with good traits now all right, um, we're going to go for medium ammo, incendiary. Just because we might have a long range, I'm actually going to take a scope. And... Uh, the new weather condition is making me even more schizophrenic than usual. That's fair. What I was honestly expecting with the ash bloom um, was that it would be... Uh, we'll take a smaller pistol. Um, apparently, there isn't a two-slot medium ammo weapon that has incendiary ammo. Um, so we'll take a precision. That's close enough. That's technically two-slot. Um... What I was expecting from the Ash Bloom was actually that it would be really, really quiet. And they put in a lot more ambient noise than I expected. Um, I was expecting it kind of to be an anti-rain where we could hear really, really, really well. Uh, go into the shooting range and go. Um, 
And as we're doing the live stream, please let me know things that you want me to look in as I'm preparing for the custom ammo deep dive. Um, leave them in chat. Uh, there's a lot of angles I am not going to think about approaching unless you guys bring it up. Um, like the two slot, three slot thing. Someone was talking about how dumb, dumb ammo might behave differently depending on how many slots the weapon is. Um, silks. Uh, the spots sound like muddy footsteps. Yeah, it really gets me. The, um, yeah, and it gets so dark, which I think I like. I'm kind of glad that the audio isn't as bad as, um, the rain. Because that really kind of got out of hand. I love the rain. I just wish it would show up about, uh, half as often as it does. Okay, so do dummies even light on fire? And we shoot him. Okay. So it is going to give us that tick. Nope. It gave me a nine tick. Oh, because we did the... Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to test incendiary ammo here. Oh, nope. Okay. That's good news. I can. Okay. Not gonna lie, this is likely the first and last time I'll be able to join EU time is really hitting my slip schedule. Hey, no problem at all. Come when you can. Um glad you could make it tonight. This is an unusual time for me. Uh usually I'll be popping on either Mondays or Wednesdays. Um but I had about an hour or so before I need to go to bed, so I figured I'd give this a drive. -by. If I shoot him, just knock those guys down and try again. So right now I'm just going to try and find what's the true range for incendiary on a medium ammo. Uh, does incendiary ammo, ammo blow up dynamite? Fun fact, I don't have it on me. Um, I'll see if I can find some in a loot box. Uh, any ammo will blow up dynamite. Uh, maybe not poison. But if you deal damage to dynamite, even with a decoy, I did test this, uh, you can blow up um, di uh, dynamite. Now, the problem is actually being able to shoot it precisely. There have been a few really good clips. Who was it? Was it Delaney? I think I saw a clip of Delaney shooting a dynamite out of the air. Uh, might have been a firebomb, but regardless. All right, so at 18, we're igniting. Take a couple steps back. Let's try and 19. I'm guessing we ignite at 20. Uh, is the range infinite? Uh, Silks, I will test that one for you. I have a barrel here I can test with. It's right up. Uh, where is it? There's a barrel right over. Nope. Uh, Vic, you're welcome. Uh, I really enjoy making this content, and so I'm glad you guys appreciate it too. Yes, range seems to be infinite when you're dealing with incendiary ammo for igniting barrels. Um, actually, a little bit about how the channel came around. Uh, I am an instructional designer by trade. Um, and I spent a whole, probably a full year or so trying to make YouTube videos that were more gameplay oriented with a group of friends. And we just couldn't get any traction on the channel. All right, there it lit at 20. I'm gonna try 21 just to be. Okay. Then let's see if the two slot does anything different. Um, and after a year of going nowhere on that group uh, YouTube channel, uh, we decided to uh, put it all to the side and stop doing it. Well, myself and uh, Tails, who's now known as Giddy Fox Gaming, um, split off and started to do our own thing. He's trying to make a career of it. I'm just doing it on the side of my existing career. Um, but, you know, if that changes in the future, I wouldn't complain. Um, but um, anyways, uh, both our channels really just took off when we split off and was doing our own thing. And I think that's because we were able to make the videos that made us happy. Okay. 
So the two slot incendiary ammo uh, makes the same, uh, has the same breakpoint as the three slot. Uh, and I believe all incendiary ammo, if you're shooting out of that key range, takes two shots to ignite. Um, so anyways, he ended up making a channel called Giddy Fox Gaming on Monster Hunter, and he's at about 6,000 subs or whatnot. And I started making stuff on Hunt Showdown, um, which I had several Hunt Showdowns on the other channel, but I was lucky if they hit 50 views. Um, but really, splitting out, let me make the video I want to make. And... Uh, I really love digging into the mechanics of stuff, um, which, you know, okay, yes, two shots at any range will ignite. Most of you probably could have already told me that, and that's what I thought it was, but again, I need video proof for everything. Um, I am going to switch out to a different gun size. And so, um... Anyways, I get to combine my uh, love for game mechanics with my career in instructional design, uh, and that's kind of where the focus on the channel is. Uh, I, I really want to help people on board into the hunt world. I did a poll asking people where, um, when you quit being new at hunt, and I think uh, the average number people said was between like three and 500 hours. Um, and so uh, really, I want to have a balance of, um, you know, that level of accessibility where I'm not going so into the nitty gritty newer people's eyes are glazing over. Um, but I also want it to be meaningful um, to people who've been around a bit longer, which a lot of you guys have told me that's what's exactly um, what's going on. And I appreciate the feedback and I'm really excited about where this is going. Uh, let's see, let's try silencers, and let's see if a pistol has the same range. Single slot pistol, not two slot. So, um... That was medium. Let's go ahead and put the effective range in here for these. I know I'm. Uh, I'm really actually being challenged on uh, data analytics and how I manage my. Um, data collection. This is not something I have experience with. Um, I got to figure out probably how to how to work a pivot table after I build out this one section. Um, so if anyone wants to be my data expert, let me know. Half joking. All right. So now this is compact ammo. I have a silencer and a oh silence pistol, but I don't think the type of a gun is going to matter. Uh, probably useless uh, to ask, but what is your favorite ammo type? Um, my favorite ammo type is definitely not poison. Um, it's definitely not incendiary. I would say it's got to be either FMJ or Dum Dum, the common answer. Um, probably what I'm taking. I think... Um, or high velocity. Uh, you know, this is a better question to ask me in a month. Um, the one I take the most is definitely high velocity. I think that's easy to see. All right, so there's... Uh, I definitely take high velocity the most on my rifle. I take uh, FMJ and Dum Dum a lot on my pistols, depending on the day. Oh my goodness. Is this 10 meters? Must be 10 meters. Here, we'll down these guys and get them back up. Um, and uh, between those two, it really depends. If I'm doing a pistol that has higher damage, like the PAX, I prefer Dum Dum because it secures those kills easier. If I'm doing something with fanning, for example, um, uh, with lower damage, I prefer the FMJ to make sure I can wall bang effectively. All right. I think this is going to be 10 meters, so... That? Oh my. 
Okay, that happened at 8. It failed at 10. Okay. So let's go 9. Okay, so it has to be under 10. There we go. Yeah, 10's the threshold there. Um, thoughts on Shadow Leap? Uh, I've been making a path or route looting meatheads and caching registers and weapon towers. I didn't really think Shadow Leap is... I don't really think Shadow Leap is a good fit in combat. Hey, Brett! Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you stop by. Um, the... There we go. Um, for those of you who don't know, Brett is a, another hunt YouTuber. He's um, down in the trying to grow group with me. Uh, I really like his montages. I highly suggest you go check out his channel. Um, anyway, Silk, uh, thoughts on Shadow Leap? Um, I think Shadow Leap's a lot of fun. I don't think it's great in combat. Um, then, of course, I saw Racha use it, and I thought it was gross in combat. I think it takes a high, a higher level of skill and understanding in the game to be able to... Um, sorry, I forgot to hit my clip button. I gotta shoot these again. So let's do an 11 where it fails. Then we'll do a 10 where it succeeds. Oh. So it's clearly on the lower side of 10. Oh. Nine. Okay. If it's 10, it's definitely on the low side of 10. Um, anyways, I think, um, yeah, exactly. Racha is Racha, though. A man can wipe a server with a Derringer. Um, yeah, I agree with that, and, and that's part of what it is. I think Shadow Leap has great potential for a skirmisher-type gameplay where you're taking a couple shots and rotating aggressively. Um, but you're also rolling the dice on not hitting an emulator. So, uh, I actually really like it for an event trait, um... Two shots to make this ignite. There you go. There's my proof. Um, and so Shadow Leap's a lot of fun. I don't think it's that uh, good for a combat perspective. I can see stealth using it a lot. And it's really good for map traversal. I was really surprised at how fast you could get around with the map on it. I was playing with a couple of friends last night. And um, uh, we were crossing the map. And... Uh, we were crossing the map, and uh, I was using Shadow Leap to get ahead of them, and I was going leaps and bounds faster than them. So I think they should maybe shorten the range a little bit. I don't think it should be that big of a boost to movement. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I love that it's in there. I, I think they do a good job balancing it to make it not too abusable, being the fact that hitting emulators or concertina armors are going to wreck your day let alone if you teleport into a pack of hellhounds. Um, and so th there's plenty of risk that goes with it that I don't mind it being as good as it is. The other thing that could be useful for it is if... Um, um, oh, lost my train of thought. I feel like it should make a noise. Um, I, I could see a situation where the fact of... Um, if you jump over an enemy hunter in a fight... Um, that could really throw someone off. So I almost feel like along your path, it should make a whoosh noise to your destination. Um, but... Send Yuri there, and then I don't think I have a... I have a two slot. That. Just to test two weapons, make sure it happens. All right. Um, and again, I'm just confirming the uh, attack ranges where um, incendiary actually ignites uh, for those who are joining late. And then we'll move on to a different weapon type. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to judge some of the things like Dum Dum and FMJ. But uh, I, I, I'm still trying to get my head around this research topic. Uh, I think uh, it'll be very valuable to the community, but it is um, going to be a bit of a beast. Uh, the 
Bertier and Sparks Pistol both half other ammos. Yes, yes. You can split their ammo types. I and it gives you more from um, special ammo boxes. I'm guessing this is 40. I'm not sure. Oh. I forgot that they had ammo types in range. That'll become handy. All right, so that's not gonna ignite. Nope, one wood should be dead anyways. Okay, ignites at 30. Try 40. It does ignite at 40. Okay. Try 41. It does ignite at 41. I don't like that my fantasy of you being on a horse and being a cowboy was some wheat in my mouth has been ruined. Well, anyways, love your vids. I'll be passing it. Have a good night. Hey, fun fact, I actually grew up riding horse. Um, so you can still have that image of me. I am totally on board with that. I'm not digging out pictures, but I absolutely was a 4 H kid. Uh, the guy, it just ignited at 41, so, um, I gotta try it out a bit. And again, I wanna, a lot of people accuse the shop of being wrong about things. And so I just want to do some double checking to maybe get an area. Um, I just had this ignite at 41, so I want to see if it's going to go out a little bit further. Okay, so not at 45. So then let's try 41 again. Maybe I was just on the edge of 40. Okay, he didn't ignite at 41. There we go, ignite at 40, just like the book says. The other thing is, um, I wanna get clips all this to have in video too. So it's not just about finding all the information, I also gotta find ways to visualize it too, so. But I'm expecting the two slot to function the same. And which it does. Yep, does not ignite, one out. And that's it for long ammo. Um, gotta clip it. Spreadsheet. I'm going to see if the, the dummies have a way to tell me if there's a difference between the levels of bleed. Um, does anyone know, do the different ammo types of dum-dum do different levels of bleed? I was under the impression that medium did a heavier bleed and um, compact ammo did a light bleed. I mean, we're going to find that out right now, but... Um, um. And then someone suggested that if you fire at a long range... Uh, I want... Uh, if you fire at a long range, that uh, you'll do less bleed if you hit from further away, which I don't think is the case, but hopefully I can find out. I feel like a sniper will be useful in that situation. And then we'll do a compact. Oh.
Not Joey G says uh, 350 hours and I'm still. I think that's one of the things I love about this game is there's something about the way it's built has so much nuance involved that there's always something new to learn and um and like both from a mechanics perspective and from a skill perspective um and on top of that the lighter pace of the game um is really one of the things i fell in love with uh, and part of that is because i don't traditionally play first person shooters so let's first of all see if there's a way we can test. Um, but uh, the theme drew me in, and the fact that it was a slower pace of game overall let me actually play and compete. Uh, John Johnson, what do you think of explosive ammo? I think it's a decent pick as a secondary ammo on something that can have multiple ammo types. Um, so, for example, like the uh, Springfield or the um, Bertier. Berther Mill? I think Berther Mill is wrong, but that's how I usually say it. The Berthier and the um, Springfield. Since you can't have a secondary ammo type, I think it is noticeably worse. Okay, so that's bleeding at 7. And that's bleeding at 9. Okay, dummies can bleed. I don't know if they progress in bleeding, though. Doesn't look like it. I gotta find a way to shoot myself, I guess. Um, and then let's see if a long distance can make that difference. Um, because it's really good for things like breaching. You can destroy doors really easy. I believe you can destroy concertina. Um, but you can't wall bang with it, and um, it it seems to be less effective than even regular ammo when you do a direct hit on someone. So that was ticking for nine. So let's see if this. As the last. Right. Trying to get the hand so he has as much. Six? There we have a discovery. It's doing light bleed from an extended range. I uh, appreciated Psycho Ghosts. Um, video where he was doing fanning with the uppercut using explosive ammo but um yeah I, I i think explosive ammo needs some love um i mean it doesn't need love it doesn't need to be competitive that's part of the fun of so much stuff in hunt is that it's not about things being good all the time it's sometimes just about things being fun all right at 59 now it's doing nine per tick Or, oh no, that must have been 49. Okay, so now that we're past 50, let's try it. Okay. Alright, past 65. Nope, oh, and I killed the guy. He was still bleeding out. So where is that change then? You know, all this stuff that is definitely never going to impact your gameplay to know that you bleed a little bit less if you're, you know, 75 meters away. But, um, but I'm here to find the nitty gritty details. That's... Did I see that wrong? I thought I was doing six on that first shot. Oh, missed. See me try and shoot at a moving target. Uh, I actually want to have a competition um, to set up a path throughout the training grounds uh, and have people compete for the best time. Uh, nine damage. Okay, did I... I must have saw that wrong. Let's really move back here. I'm running on ammo. Zach Dew, hello and welcome. 
Uh, right now, I'm testing dum dum ammo. Can't find the target I was aiming at. I'm trying to figure out if there's a spot where dum dum ammo does less bleed if you're shooting far enough away. And I had it happen once, but now it's not happening. And I'm not sure what's going on there. I could just aim for his legs. It'd be a lot easier. Because now it's doing intense bleed every time. I'm going to try a different dummy. Because, I don't know, the game's quirky. After I grab my ammunition. <laughs> So what is the, um, I don't know, what's the most interesting thing about a custom ammo you guys know? Help me figure out this streamer thing. I'm not, I'm not a streamer personality, so I'm going to do my best. I, <laughs> um, so, uh, I appreciate any sort of engagement you can do to encourage me. Um, because I want to get better at this. This is fun. There, it's bleeding at six again. So there is a breaking point where you start to do less bleed. Okay, we will make that guy our victim and we will try it again. I'm gonna kill him. Oh, now he's doing, oh, of course, I bled him again. 160. Let's see if it's 150. Okay, we're at 149, and now I'm doing intense bleeding. Let's off him and try again. We're past 150. We're gonna whiff that shot. Trying to get the legs. I suppose at this range it doesn't matter as much, but. Mm. <gasps> oh, I gotta change my mouse buttons. There we go. Nine. So maybe it just glitches and applies the wrong bleed sometimes. Like, that wouldn't surprise me. Off and we'll try that again. Yep. Because now it's hitting at 9 at the same distance. And it gave me 6 before. So there is something inconsistent about which bleed it's going to apply. So then... Here, let's shoot a bunch of these guys at shorter range and see if it ever happens nearby. Uh, Zach Drew, I didn't know the Nitro Dum Dum round could go through walls until an update uh, said they reduced its ability to pierce walls. Yeah, the Nitro Shredder ammo, there's really no downside other than slightly less velocity. Um, the um, If you look up the uh, channel Cornf, uh, C-O-R-N-F, he did a really good video um, that did an extremely thorough job at looking at ammo penetration. So we're just going to shoot all these guys and see if one of them ends up... With less bleed than the other. Oh. Nope. They've all got it. Or, I'm always going to feel like I'm saying that wrong. I think I'm saying it right. I don't know how else you would say it. But anyways, yeah, he, he has some great stuff on his channel. All right, nine on everyone. Oh, 
<laughs> it's pronounced corn. That helps. Thanks. Appreciate it, Benji. Does limbs affect bleed? Uh, no. Not that I'm seeing. Um, regardless, I just shot all these in the chest, and they all did intense bleeding. They were ticking at 9 or 10 damage a tick. Um, and then I just did all these in the arms, and they did 9 or 10 damage a tick. So, um, limbs do not impact bleeding. But I want to see if I can figure out why... Um... I want to see if I can figure out how to get it to repeat the uh, lower bleed. According to voiceover on his channel, it sounds like Corp hopes that helps. Uh, does sh Shooting Range still have the dummy bug where they keep bleeding uh, level after they die? Uh, it must not. I didn't realize that was a bug, but um, this guy up here, I killed about five times. And one of those, uh, it was on a weaker bleed. Oh, you're... Mm, I see what you're saying. Um, thank you for that. I don't know. I gotta check then. So you're telling me I gotta shoot on a fresh dummy at a fresh distance to see if it happens. Oh, great. This is getting more complicated. Appreciate it. <laughs> Alright, so over 100 meters... I think you're right. Oh, no. Uh, for my clip's sake, uh, Benji the NG said that uh, the shooting range has a bug where um, a dummy retains its bleed status in between, or after it dies. All right. Um, clip that. Okay, we're going to let that guy die. <laughs> going to give that another shot. I don't know how to handle that one. Well, I guess I just gotta load out and load in. That's entirely what's happening. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Benji, you were right. Um, all right, so <laughs> now we got a fresh test on a fresh dummy each time. Let's see if we can find that limit. Okay, I'm guessing it's at 50. I don't know. So let's try and shoot at 59 and see what that gives us. But, well, 49 is what I meant. Okay, yep. So 48, technically, and that gave us heavy bleed. So now let me find someone I haven't shot. I don't think I've shot these guys. Um, I can always just load out and load back in, too. Uh, okay, someone just mentioned it a minute ago. You can also use the targets at the lighthouse and sweet bell flower. Yes, I can, but part of the problem is I got to shoot stuff at specific range. So all these dummies are still fresh, too. Um, and so I'll see. Oh, I suppose I can... Lighthouse is up over there. Yeah. Uh, I can always reload. That'll refresh all my nearby dummies, too. Alright, so it was doing it at... It's going to be too close. Alright, let's see if we can go up here. It was doing it at 40. I want to see if it does it over 50. There we go. That's a good angle. What? Oh, I pinged the back one. Darn it. All right, let's try that again. No, now he's doing heavy bleed. Okay. It's over 60. Next question is, does that change between guns? All right, new targets. This guy's a new target. Let's try past 75. Nora, welcome to the stream. No. Line up someone just over 80. 
between 80 and 100. Maybe some guys over here. Gonna be way too far though. I can always walk in that direction. You know what? We're reloading. Hey Nora, doing good. Just doing some uh, testing on incendiary ammo. Or sorry, dum dum ammo. Now we started with incendiary. Uh, I have a very sad spreadsheet. I'm trying to make into a very happy spreadsheet, and we'll see if we get there. There it is. Back in, enter right away. Nora, how's your week going? We've made it to Tuesday. This is my last week of work before the holiday, and I'm off till the new year, which is nice. Hope all of you get a solid winter break, and none of you work in movie theaters on Christmas Day. That's I was talking with my brother-in-law, or was it my brother-in-law? Might have been someone from church. Regardless, I was talking to someone talking about um, Christmas plans. They're like, yeah, we might go to a movie on Christmas. I'm like, I feel so bad for the people who work in movie theaters because apparently a lot of people hold going to the theaters as a holiday tradition on Christmas. And like, I feel very blessed to no longer work in the service industry. Aha! 80 might be our threshold, folks. I think we found it. Okay, so now I want to get one at 79 and then get one at 80 again just to uh, get it for clips' sake. Uh, this is not going to be the angle I need. Yeah, nope. The only place I want to go on Christmas is from my bedroom to the living room to my bedroom. That's the... Um... Alright, so we want to test it at 79. Then we want to test it at just over 80 again. Nope, missed. Come on, let me shoot your hand. Yep, that was 79, and it bled heavy bleeding. Now I want to find a new target at 81. I don't remember here. I know that guy's new. He's fresh up there. Benji, thanks for knowing about the dumb bleed bug. That, oh, no, I didn't mean to shoot him. I didn't see where I was standing. Oh, <laughs> stink. All right. Um, what? Here, these guys are fresh. One eighty-one. I think two of my favorite things about Christmas Day, other than family and presents and, and those goodies, are eggnog and we found it, folks. We found it. I feel good about that one. Okay. So past 80 meters, your medium ammo will be doing light bleeding. Uh, Benji, I'm glad to hear you're enjoying the deep dives. I enjoy making them. Um, and you guys give me a good reason to. Thank you for all the support and encouragement. Originally, this was not 
I was probably going to get like free videos onto your sort of a thing, but um, you guys blew up that first video and that encouraged me to re-examine my priorities. Uh, I'm going to get this at 80. At 80, technically heavy bleed. It's right around there. 80, 81 is the transition. Um, so, now for those of you who are sniping with dum dum ammo, you know not to rely on that bleed damage from over 80 meters away. <laughs> you know, it could happen. I hit him. He's bleeding. Quick. Let's run for 30 seconds. That's, that's the use case I see in my head for this information. All right, let's go over to see these guys. Uh, I assume compact ammo is always light bleeding. Let's try it up close. And there's seven. Get two of them going at the same time. Beautiful. I wonder if, hmm, wonder if I can get a long range shot. Where is he? Him. Three damage of bleeding. Okay, so then. So then we have to ask, where's that threshold? Why? Because we have integrity. Alright, I gotta refresh my dummies. <laughs> so, three damage per tick must be light bleeding, six damage must be medium, and nine must be heavy. Um, I don't think I've seen actual numbers for that anywhere. I'm going to uh, find the range on these compact ammo, and I think we will um, call it for a night after that. Actually, is there a compact ammo with a scope? I bet you there is. Doesn't escalate uh, bleeding escalate after a certain time? Um, yes, 10 letters. If it's actually on a hunter, bleeding does escalate over time. Uh, the dummies do not seem to represent that. Uh, I want to scope on this for simplicity. Actually, I can probably just... Oh. oh. There you have it. There is no rifle. There we go. That does dum dum in compact ammo. Well, oh, except for the carbine officer. Let's bring extra ammo. sad that we don't have a reliable wiki i mean you can update it like that's that's the hard thing is um the wiki is fan run so we only have as, as much accurate information on the wiki as people are willing to give after i did my bullet velocity video or infographics someone was like you should update this all in the wiki <laughs> coat spin you know, a stylish coat coat is important when you're in the bayou. I didn't even notice I do it. I I always spin my hunters. Alright, let's get my dead eye out and What should we try? Do we think it's 80 again or do we think it's less than that? Try it at 80, and then we'll find it. Um, okay, there's our light bleed at 80. Get that, and then see if... 79 gives us, I should probably use a more 
boring kid hunter. Um, yeah, keeping the wiki fully up to date is especially rough in a game like this, where there might be patch notes, but they're not fully detailed. Yeah, and just someone remembering to do it. Even. Alright, take Being vague. Hey, it's all about the secret sauce. You know, and that sauce tastes good, so I'm not going to complain to the chef. Thank you, Micro. Lead ranges are 4 and 3, 6 and 7, and 9 and 10. Not sure if the variations is random or sequential yet. Good question. I could probably find that out. That's also a light bleed. Okay. So the threshold is less than 80. We're going to jump down to 59 and see what that does. Let's just know what we're looking for. Okay. 49. too many buttons on my mouse. I misclick my weapons all the time. All right, so that was seven, six, seven, six, six. Okay, I'll clip that and then I'll clip another one. I don't think it really matters, but anyways, um, that was 49. So I'm guessing at 51, this will be light bleeding again. someone at 51. I know who I can rely on. I have two reliable dummies over here. Okay. One of these at 49 and one of these at 50. Or 51. 49. That should be a 6 damage tick. Shoot me. Okay. Nope. That was wrong. Try that at 44. Forty-nine then. Alright. Start moving inside for some of these ranges. Uh, this testing may be easier with another player in the shooting range. Absolutely, it totally would be. Um, uh, and some of it I will absolutely need to um, drag someone in here with me. Tonight was not planned, so I didn't want to coordinate schedules with anyone. Um, tonight was a, hey, I've got an hour. People said they wanted it. I'll give it a shot. And this is my shot. Okay. 39. It's gonna be down, down to like 20. All right, so 28. I'm guessing the threshold is 30 then. Um, could it be on a gun by gun basis? When I was testing incendiary ammo, I tried a few different guns and it seemed to be uh, ammo specific. 
Um, I'm actually thinking about putting together a, a call list of things I need tested. But like I said, I'm still trying to figure out what all that is with this video. Um, and then I will definitely try and include the community uh, if I ever get that organized. All right. So I'm thinking it's 30. So this at 31. Don't fall off. Can I see him from this angle? Yes, I can. Okay, this from 31 should be a light bleed. Yes, there it is. 31 was a light bleed, and so I'm guessing 29 is going to be a heavy bleed. Or a, um, not heavy, what do you call it? Medium bleed. I don't know if that's a fresh dummy. So let's do 29 over here. I hit him. I'm going to call that a success. So the threshold again, for the clip's sake. The threshold for compact ammo is at 30 meters. Bam. Um, Dum Dum has less penetration, not none. But, you know, all right, let's test that now. Um, I think there's a few pieces of wood around here that we can use to see if we can shoot through. I think, yes, there are people hiding back here. Okay, that did not penetrate. Let me go find a medium ammo. Probably clip these. Shotguns. There's a medium ammo. I need to find dumb dumb ammo. Convenient. Is a guy behind there. Medium ammo. Dum dum. Does not penetrate a single sheet of. Shot. I don't think there's RNG involved in pen, but you know. And this is common. Dum -dum. Likewise, nothing. And we don't have long ammo, dum dum. Uh, so no, uh, Dum Dum does not seem to have penetra any penetration. Um, this guy survives for now. All right, everyone, uh, I've got to get going to bed. I gotta um, port and name these clips. But uh, thank you very much for joining me. I will be doing live streams when I have dedicated time to sit down to do researchy things. Um, and. Um, that's that's all it is. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I have a great night. Um, I will see you next time.